ever heard the story, a Bruce Lee story, that um, one time during a training session, I think in Los Angeles, that he used like Shotokan style, like classical karate style techniques in, in like a sparring match or something um, to prove that it's not so much the style or the art as it was understanding things like timing and distance. Well, whether it's a true story or not, I'm going to do something similar today. Hello, everyone. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel. Welcome to the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast number, is this 238 or 239? It's the one about Jeet Kune Do's Kata, Kihon, and Kumite. All right. So as you're logging in, if you'd be kind enough to say where you're logging in from, hit the like button and feel free to continue doing so throughout the broadcast. If you're catching the simulcast over on the YouTube, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell as well. If you enjoy my work and you'd like to support the program, please visit jkdrebel.com. Click on the Rebel Gear link, and that's where you'll see stuff like this, the JKD Notables coffee mug. Also available as a t-shirt, long sleeve, short sleeve, uh, sweatshirt, hoodie, all that good stuff. But of course, the best thing you can do is to sh share this video and spread the word about the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. All right, let's um, let's get into this. So when I was a little kid growing up in Barbados and we all got interested in the Kung Fu films, um, out of necessity, really, our first approach was to fight each other using what we could recall from the movie, right? So we'd use the, the fighting techniques that we, that we uh, could remember seeing our favorite stars do on the big screen. Now, I was a, I was a big fan of uh, Chen Quan Tai and uh, Chi Quan Chun, so I was kind of into like the Shaolin style stuff. Um, as those of us who got deeper and deeper into, into the study, um, we would visit the local bookstores and see if there was anything that they had on, um, on the bookshelves. And that's where sometimes you were lucky to come across stuff like, um, like this, right? The Bruce Stegner stuff. Um, I'm probably uh, dating myself or aging myself if, if, you, if you know anything about this stuff. So that's where you'd see stuff like this, uh, you know, Tegner's Book of Kung Fu and Tai Chi and, uh, and all that good stuff. Um, when the Kung Fu craze came about, so I'm jumping the timeline a little bit now. So when the Kung Fu craze, the Kung Fu craze uh, grew, the, the bookstores started to bring in magazines and that's how you would get your hands on. I think I have a clip of this too. That's how you, some of you hardcore guys will know this magazine, right? This was a, a, a Hong Kong publication, right? Real Kung Fu. So if you were really into the Kung Fu films and what have you, um, you, you would, you would try to get your hands on stuff like that. Right. So, um, in fact, that guy doing the tiger claw thing there, if you all recognize the face, he's in a pretty fame, he's in a pretty well-known, uh, Jackie Chan movie. Right. Anyhow, um, so the bookstores would bring in magazines and, and, um, we could get our, our hands on stuff like that. Some of us in search of continuing to improve, we ended up going to the local schools. So I spent a short time in, in actual traditional karate training, but it was far, it was far, it was too far removed from what I was seeing on the big screen. So even though I never really joined the school, I did develop friendships with a number of the, the students there so that I always had sparring partners and training partners and what have you. As a budding Bruce Lee fan, I opted to join the local Chinese boxing academy. That was technically the translation of the name of the school, the Chinese boxing academy. Even though I quickly realized that their Chinese boxing was not that closely related to the Chinese boxing I had seen in Way of the Dragon, if you get my reference. So I don't think I lasted their past six months or what have you, besides I was an, an annoying little uh, Bruce Lee fan and every every two words out of my mouth was Bruce Lee said this, Bruce Lee said that. So um, I was in short order, I was out of that school and back to the, let's call it the, um, the autodidactic martial arts approach, 
right? So by now, the Bruce Lee craze is in full swing. And um, magazines, Black Belt Magazine, Karate Illustrated were more readily available. But if you were, if you were really into Bruce Lee, you have, and I don't have a, I don't, do I have a, I don't think I have a screenshot of it, but you guys will, will know this magazine. Um, if you're really into it, you got yourself, um, you got your hands on Fighting Stars magazine because they more often than not had Bruce Lee on uh, as the cover story, right? Um, and then in 72 or so, the, the Wing Chun book uh, by James Lee, edited by Bruce Lee, as they say, came out. Um, 77 was the Tao Jeet Kune Do, 78 was Bruce Lee's fighting method, and on and on and on. So I tell you all of this so that you get um, a, a background that when I went to California in 83, and I first, and I started training with, with uh, Dan and Sano, and I saw uh, Tim Tackett and Larry Hartzell and those guys. And I say that we were told, but I think it's probably just how I interpreted what I heard. But I'll, I'll, I'll put it that way, that we were told that anything that the karate schools are doing, you want to do the opposite, right? But like I said, that's probably how I interpreted it, right? In any case, I totally embraced that idea. But fast forward, uh, let's see, fast forward maybe five years later, or maybe 10 years, when I started professionalizing my school, now I'm living in Miami, right? So now, now, now I don't have the corporate job, so I'm doing martial arts full time. So I'm looking into professionalizing my school. I found myself going back to my traditional roots because by that time I had come to learn that the traditional martial arts schools were doing quite well professionally, especially after the release of, in 84, I think it was, of the Karate Kid. These guys were making big bucks and I wanted to be part of the making bucks um, crowd. So I started to think in terms of, okay, well, if these guys are so successful doing all their traditional stuff, is there something that I could learn from them? Hence today's kata. Oh, I got to tell you something about, about today's title. Um, I forget if it was a broadcast or a dialogue, but it was in the comments and, um, and th th somebody in the comments said something about forms, uh, basics and fighting, which is pretty much a translation of kata, kihon and kumite. So I asked the question, what would you think, what would you say are JKD's versions of forms, basics and fighting? And I wasn't that happy with the answer, but it did give me the idea for today's broadcast title. So to get back to professionalizing and trying to build a curriculum and trying to find a method to keep students, um, as John Graydon or Dave Kovar would say, smiling and sweaty and eager to come back for more. Um, I, I just took a hard look at their structure, the, the traditional schools at their structure. And I came to these realizations. Kata, what they had as, as kata, the, the, the preset stuff. Um, we didn't need that. We had shadow boxing, whether it was freelance shadow boxing or even preset shadow boxing. But we're never going to do kata because it's too unrealistic, better to develop, even if it's just short, um, uh, um, shadow boxing sequences. Okay. What they had is Kihon, which is, which translates as, um, uh, uh, basics, uh, in, in case you don't know that, right? So Kihon is the practice of basic techniques. Well, we had that in, in droves in the form of solo equipment drills. So like on the heavy bag, on the Wing Chun dummy, whatever piece of equipment it is that you can work on by yourself. But then we also had basics practice in partner drills. And that's where I think, especially in the early days, Jeet Kune Do really differentiated. Because I can tell you, I don't remember any kind of sophisticated 
equipment partner drills in any of the traditional stuff that I did and any of the maybe not as traditional stuff. That use of focus mips, especially in the early days, I would say it was unique to the Jeet Kune Do clan. It was in the Kumite, in the sparring, where I found more and more stuff that we could adapt and put to very good use. So again, in case you're not aware, the Kumite is not the movie, right? Kumite um, refers to the fighting or the sparring. And like everybody in martial art pretty much thinks, it is a culmination of all your training. The sparring is the crucible, and Jeet Kune Do uh, subscribes to that point of view as well. The problem I find is that a lot of people don't understand the actual purpose of sparring, and they go straight to what in the classical arts would be called Jiu uh, Kumite, which is the free sparring. But the really good traditional karate schools, they don't even do that. They don't go straight to the free sparring. So if you're trying to be informed in how to structure something in your JKD school, there is, I think there's stuff that you could learn from the traditional arts. So for example, um, they have a thing uh, called um, Sanbon Kumite, right? Which is three, um, three steps sparring. So the guy punches and you block, he punches again, you block, he punches again, you block and you counter punch, right? Totally unrealistic. And so I am not at all, right, in case somebody's jumping the gun, I am not at all advocating that we start doing three-step sparring. However, however, um, it can be used with JKD modifications, of course, as an introduction to the idea of, um, of counterfighting. It can be used for kids, and it can be used for adult beginners if you wanted to introduce them to the idea right but it would not be you know any of the classical nonsense stuff right so that's sanbon uh, uh three steps sparring which then then you go to one step so one step obviously is a little bit more dynamic because they launch one punch and you you block and you counter so it's much more dynamic much more immediate um i i would say a little bit closer to the immediacy that um you know, you, you, I, I remember Sifu Dan saying one time in, um, even in the Wing Chun, like you would, you would practice the pox out and you'd go pox out one, pox out two, pox out three, and then maybe hit. And Bruce was like, nah, let's just do it on the first motion. So it's almost like, it, like I heard that story and I thought immediately about three step sparring versus one step sparring. So one step is closer to the immediacy that we would be looking for in, um, in, in, in the JKD approach. Um, then they have a thing called Kihon Kumite. So that is sparring with the basics. So they're going through um, a, a set of prearranged techniques, which are countered accordingly. So it's not the repeating three times of the same technique. It's not the single attack technique. The Kihon Kumite, it sounds to me like attacking and defending but with combinations, you see, instead of just throwing the same attack three times or throwing a single attack, it's now using combinations in your attack and defend it. Um, there's a thing called Yakusoku Kumite, which is um, prearranged fighting. And this is prearranged like the others, but as you become more proficient, you're able to increase the speed and then your transition between being the attacker versus being the defender, that's something that, that as you get better, you, you, you can speed that up. That sounds to me like what we would call counter for counter training in, um, in, in the Filipino arts, right? Um, Tenshiki Kumite means modified prearranged fighting. What that refers to and how it's different from Yakusoku is the degree of contact. It could be light contact to moderate contact. But again, that depends on your control and your proficiency level, right? Um, and it, this is where you can also introduce variables. 
like one person punches only, the, the other person kicks. What we called um, limited sparring in the old days in, in, in JKD world. And then, of course, there is the Jiu Kumite, the free fighting, where nothing is prearranged. But notice that there's like three or four or five sets of prearranged stuff gradually building people up to the free arranged sparring, right? So it's not going immediately to free arrange. And I've seen that happen way too often. And I always thought that people in JKD would have a more sophisticated approach to this, um, this, this crucible level of training, this sparring level. Uh, there's one more type that, that I had never even known the name. I didn't know that there was a, a particular name for it. It's called um, Jisen Kumite. And Jisen Kumite, you might not have heard, like me, you might not have heard much about it, but you've definitely seen it if you've ever watched any of the full contact, no pads fighting that the Kyokushin people are famous for, right? That, that's a thing called Jisen Kumite. Now, I remember hearing about in the Filipino martial arts, an approach to that where it's free arranged and there's no protective gear at all, right? So uh, that might be something, if you guys know anything about it, you might want to comment on or what have you, right? So, okay, so all of that being said, what I wanted to point out to you is that, you know, if you take blanket statements, oh, whatever the traditional schools do, you want to do the opposite, not always true, right? So my interpretation, ended up being a misinterpretation because if you're smart enough, you can look at, at, at the keys to success of other people in other areas or in a similar area. And then using JKD um, intelligence, you can adapt what is necess what, what, what's necessary, right? So notice how I'm avoiding uh, saying, you know, using the four tenets of Jeet Kune Do because I, I don't want to irritate anybody. <laughs> Right. Anyhow, so a lot of variety in sparring approaches leading to the ultimate of full contact with or without protective gear. But please, please notice how they don't rush to get to that point. They spend a ton of time in the prearranged setting while building up the attributes needed for proper application. That's all I got to say. Let me hear your comments below. That's all I got to say about this video. Let me know what you think. Right. Uh, comment, rate. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter at Dwight Woods and on Instagram at Dwight D. Woods at um, paypal.me. You can find uh, the Jeet Kune Do, paypal.me slash unified MA Miami. You can find the Jeet Kune Do Journey Volume 1, raw but edited uh, version. Coming up on Friday, should be at 6 p.m. Eastern time. I just could confirm it with him. Um, Long time JKD uh, colleague of, of mine, I think Pete and I met, this is uh, Peter Hetrick. We met um, at CMAA in St. Louis, Missouri in 1984. I was about, what, 10 years old or so, six, between six and 10 years old, right? Okay, so Pete's uh, coming on the JKD Dialogues on, um, on Friday. Okay, now, embarrassment time. I'm sure you can see that today is a purple day, but with the change in the month, the numerology colors change, and I got caught off guard with no Bruce Lee purple shirts in the laundry, done in the laundry. So there's nothing to show you on this one. It's just, <laughs> it's just an old um, purple workout shirt. All right, so embarrassed as I am, that's it for me today. Right, um, you guys go ahead and comment. I, I, I hope to get a lot of feedback from you on this particular topic, right? Okay, so until um, Friday at 6 p.m., this is Dwight Woods, the G Kendo Rebel, signing off. You guys take care. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Talk soon. Okay, so that so this is going to be the title, Jeet Kune Do's Kata, Kihon, and Kumite. The idea came from this, in, in a comment from the recent dialogue. There was a thing about um, 
there, there was a comment about uh, forms, uh, basics, and fighting. Forms, fighting, and basics, right? Okay, now I recognize that terminology. I know what that terminology is about because I spent time in traditional classical karate, right? So I know what that is about. So I replied to the comment, I go, hey, what would you say is the Jeet Kune Do version of Kata, Kihon, and Kumite? Because that's what is forms, basics, and fighting in Japanese karate terminology. Kata, Kihon, Kumite. The reply comes back, oh, I would say the Jeet Kune Do version of that is um, simple, direct, and, and freedom. No, simplicity, directness, and freedom. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I was being liberal. So here is, I'll make it up, right? Karate kata. I go here, here, and I go like that. Right? Okay? Boom. That can also become kihon. Because I can just train this over and over again as part of my basics. Right? That translates directly into kumite. See, so this is the great thing about, let's say, a, a style like Shotokan. So in the kata, I go, in the basics, right? Well, so let's say we do um, two steps par. So my partner kicks at me and I go, phoom, phoom, and I punch it, right? It's two steps far or one step far or whatever it is that you call it. When I get into the kumite, right, and I start going like this, see, the second that guy kicks, guess what I do? I go like this, phoom, bang! So how far removed are those three sets of motions? The kata goes like this. The kihon practice goes like this. Millions of repetitions. And the sparring goes like this. Drastic differences between them? Not at all. So Jeet Kune Do comes along and says what now in the modern era? Oh, no, you gotta go like this. And like this, and like this, and like this. Which is not even what the classical people, right? The classical people seem to have evolved. They got the idea. So in Jeet Kune Do, your kata becomes what you would pull off. So my kata becomes bang, bang, bang. Because that's something that I might pull off. I make it up for whatever reason, right? Whatever the inspiration is, but that becomes my kata. In my basics with a partner, guess what? So now we practice uh, the kihon. So we'll do uh, two steps sparring. So in two steps sparring, he hits the jab cross. I go one, two, and then I go one, two, three. So watch my kata, right? One, two, three. That's my kata. Watch me add the defensive or counter offensive notion to my kata. Boom, boom, bang, bang, bang. Watch me do now my kihon practice, my basics practice with a partner. He hits the one, two, right? And I go. In the kumite, it's the same idea. The only thing you don't know is when you're gonna go. Um, uh, you, you, you know how you intend to go, right? But even in the sparring, you just, it's like um, Cass Magda told us about Daniel Lee. So we could have a, a sparring session where my only goal for the whole night of the sparring session is to see if I can pull off jab, cross, and the lead uppercut on somebody at some point, right? And let's say it takes me the whole night to pull it off once. 
Guess what? That is a fruitful sparring session. Because I'm not trying to pull off a bunch of different things. I'm just focusing on this one thing. But that one thing of, uh, on which I'm focusing is as close as possible in all the types of training. Synchronization with self, synchronization with a partner or opponent, and then application under fighting conditions. In all those instances, it is as close as possible to the, the, let's call it perfect application of what it is I'm trying to do. 